Hey, what's going on guys? It's Funkovai here on behalf of MMOBomb.com and welcome back to yet another First Impressions. Today we're taking a look at Transformers Universe, recently gone into open beta. Ooh, looks like I was logged out there for a second. Let's go ahead and log back in here. Recently gone into open beta. It's developed by, of course, Jagex, uh, famous developers behind RuneScape, another browser-based MMORPG. Uh, Transformers Universe is also based in the browser using the unity engine however you can download a standalone version of the game and i would recommend you do so if you can it significantly improves loading times and uh, definitely makes the overall experience much better uh, once you actually start the game here you're able to choose between the autobots and decepticons unfortunately there's no sort of character customization or outright you know creating a character and progressing through it you as a player or a commander of Decepticons or Autobots, depending on which side you choose. And so you're going to unlock different Decepticons and Autobots uh, to add to your roster and bring into battle. Now, that being said, you can have both. You can also be an Autobot if you're also a Decepticon. There isn't sort of like a lockout. And you're able to choose between the two here uh, on the front menu screen. I've had better luck with Decepticon, so I'll go ahead and jump into those characters and show those off. Uh, from a gameplay perspective, a lot of the characters, at least a lot of the initial Decepticons and Autobots, are very similar to each other. They have access to kind of the same types of weaponry, same style of abilities, with slight variances to make them both distinctively unique. Of course, they also have their own unique styling. Uh, the game is set during the Prime Universe, so you have that sort of really edged uh, look to all of the, the different uh, Decepticons and Autobots, not so much the boxy look. Uh, like the original 80s TV show. So if we look here, I have access to three different Decepticons innately. These are the ones that you gain through doing the tutorial, and they each sort of represent some of the different styles of gameplay available in Transformers Universe. So Rampart here, he's a soldier. He's much more of like a tanky, bruiser-style character up front in the action. He's got a minigun here. Uh, which uh, does pretty good damage here, and depending on which guns you use, uh, all Decepticons and Autobots have a shield, and then their spark, which is their health points, essentially. And some guns are better at taking down shields, while other guns are better at taking down spark, and then some are sort of the middle ground, they take down both equally. So you can look here and actually determine uh, which one is best at which. This one here does 3 out of 8 shield damage and 3 out of 8 health mitigation, or health damage, so it's kind of like middle of the road. This one is much better for doing health damage, doesn't do quite as much shield, and then this one is equal for both shield and damage. So like I said, he is a brawler, and his abilities are sort of going to uh, reflect that. Uh, maximum force allows him to deal an extra 60% damage over a short duration. Fortified barrier allows him to repair himself for 157% of the damage dealt to him. Uh, and then Fugitive Pursuit allows him to increase his movement speed because he's sort of the slowest style of uh, characters available here in Transformers Universe. Now Hotwire, he's going to be the medic style ability or a medic style Decepticon. Again, their Autobots have their own equivalent to this. And he has his Pulse Blaster, uh, the Liege Pistols, and the Retroban Beam Gun, which is a healing gun specific uh, to Hotwire. It basically allows him to heal up his allies here. I believe it only really heals uh, the HP. Uh, shields regenerate over time when you're out of combat. HP very slowly regenerates when you're out of combat, so you definitely would want to have a medic or some sort of healing ability uh, available to you or your teammates uh, so that you can heal everybody up. So definitely more of a support style of a character. His abilities here, again, uh, sort of reflect that. 50% chance uh, or 50% increased repairing done. Uh, getaway Evade increases missed chance on oncoming attacks by 70%, and Damage Deceptor reflects 40% of the damage to the enemies. And then finally, Drive-By is sort of like the, the demolisher, this sort of straight-up damage dealer. He's dealt with, uh, he has access to rocket launchers here, uh, a laser rifle, and then an energy glove. Uh, laser rifle is actually interesting in that it's a beam style of weapon, so you can hit really, really far away, uh, but it does minimal damage. However, one thing I haven't mentioned is that all of the different weapons that you have access to have a special S-Tech ability that you can use by hitting the middle mouse button. This is the charged ability that requires you to be constantly in battle uh, for you to get the charges to use it. But it grants you like a special sort of one-time use ability until you can uh, recharge it. So for example here, the Gravity Energy Gloves, this is the melee style of uh, weaponry, you know, versus the Ramparts who uses this giant flak X. These gloves here, when you do your S-Tech ability, it will repair you for 750% 
at the damage you dealt. So it's his only sort of uh, healing style of ability. So this guy is much more uh, built around the fact that you're gonna get up close and personal and when you need to heal, you'll use his special ability and that'll uh, allow you to do that. Now he's got some other things which sort of, again, play into his role as a damage dealer. Night Coolant allows him to deal an additional 10% damage with energy gloves and rocket launchers and laser rifle damage is increased by 30% and then it reduces the cooldowns and reload times. Metal Fatigue causes periodic damage to nearby enemies, and then Rust Reinforcer reduces incoming damage by 75%. Now, if you wanted to unlock these other characters here, you will need to purchase them. And currently, the only way you can do that is through the use of these uh, up here, these relic points. Uh, or these, yeah, I believe they're called relics. Um, those you can accrue while you play the game, but you accrue them fairly slowly, I'd have to say. Uh, you don't get too many of them. Uh, and the characters generally cost anywhere between like upper, you know, close to 2,000 relics, upwards to 5,000 relics. So this one's 1995, again 1995, 39.95. So these are really, really expensive. And generally speaking, you're going to probably have to purchase gold in order to unlock these innately. Uh, purchasing gold, you basically can get about a thousand for about five bucks. Uh, to get 5,000 or 6,000 with what you need, you're gonna spend more than $20 to get this character here with gold. So you're gonna, or with real cash. So you'll spend $20 to get about, I think four or five grand and then spend another extra thousand to get the, the middle. So you're looking at something along the lines of $30 or so just to pick up one character. So right now pricing for that is ridiculously expensive for the, the upper tiered characters here. Lower tiered, not so much, 1995, still looking to spend something like $10, uh, and uh, that's kind of comparable to Orcsmith's Die, which we just uh, reviewed not too long ago, which was about $10 as well. You can do some customization through different coloring and what have you, uh, and of course you can also buy different sprays as well, uh, but you do get access to three innately when you start the game. So enough of that, let's go ahead and jump in on our character here. We'll show off some of the other options available once we get into the game. This is sort of the hangar area where you choose which bot you want to start the game with. Uh, the game was originally supposed to be an MMO. It was developed in, originally developed in 2011 and it's been in development since then rather. Uh, but Jagus, I think in 2013, decided to revamp the game, change it from an MMO to a MODA, which is massively online tactical action game, I believe. Uh, from the looks of things, you can definitely see a lot of the elements. Oh, let's go ahead and get out of this auto queue there. You can definitely see some of the original elements of uh, the MOBA or MMO rather still available in the game. There's a lot of sort of open world areas that you can mess around with while you're waiting for the PvP. PvP is the main focus. You notice it automatically queued me up when it started there. Uh, but before we go ahead and queue up and actually show that off, I'm going to go ahead and show off some of the open world areas. Uh, in the game. So this is sort of the base area. There's a base area for the Autobots and a base area for the Decepticons and then two separate sort of instance open world areas that you can engage in with other people that are sort of perform open world quests. Uh, they're kind of like just missions essentially and uh, farm up some Energon which we'll talk about. So these areas are not meant to be like the main source of entertainment. There is something to do in between the rounds. Uh, in fact you'll notice here that Oddly enough, you kind of see the whole map before you completely load in. Transitions between areas take a long time, and oftentimes uh, it just almost feels unnecessary. <laughs> All right, so I've turned into a car here. You can hit T to turn into a car and turn back into your Autobot mode. Uh, when you're in your uh, car mode, you have a couple of different abilities you have access to. So I have like a chain gun that I can use on my one ability here. And then four, I believe, also does me a damage boost. And then if I hit my middle mouse button, I'll kind of come out of my mode here and do like a slam on the ground. I think that does some damage as well. Outside of this, I also have access to my primary weapon, which is my rocket launcher. And I can hit one, two, or three, switch between all my different weaponry here. Depending on which weapon you're using, and in fact, depending on which weapons your Autobot or Decepticon has access to, um, it'll use different types of ammunition. So, for example, this is a rocket launcher. I can hit two times. I can fire it two times, rather, in order to use it. And then uh, the beam weapon is based on uh, just a heat marker. So you can see in the right-hand corner, the more I use it, the more the beam goes up, and uh, it will end up uh, overheating, and I'll have to wait for it to cool down. The third one uh, is ammunition-based, I believe. Oh no, it's just my melee. Some of them have more ammunition, obviously, depending on what the weapon type. So melee here, I can just use it 
as much as I want, but I can charge it up. I can hold it down to, uh, to deal more damage. So this is a good area here to do some PvE and uh, hang out with other people while you wait for your PvP matches. But I'll go ahead and show a little bit of the initial combat so you can get an idea for it before we actually jump into a PvP match, uh, which is going to be where most players find themselves spending uh, the majority of their time. Now, I do like the fact that the transformations... Uh, between car and uh, uh, you know like transformer mode essentially uh, humanoid mode are quite good you know you, you have these really cool like transforming animations and overall the character designs are, are not bad uh, however off the bat one thing that I really don't like is the fact that uh, the environments just look really really bland I mean if you look around here these environments not very much color here and comparatively to the the actual oh these guys are take do a lot of damage I've got to make sure not to do that uh, compared to the other, come here, uh, the character designs, it's it's pretty lackluster in some areas. Some maps are better than others. Some uh, maps have uh, better design, more color between them. But uh, I have found the open worlds at least to be to be pretty bland. So outside of these missions that you know basically spawn every few minutes, uh, there isn't really anything that you can discover so much. You know, you're not going to be able to just run across a quest or a mission or something like that. They, they're always fed to you, and I don't know if this will change. Uh, as the game moves past open beta into full release, it's like I've been slowed down here. It's all right. And these guys really are not, they're really easy to kill. And honestly, the more people you have, this, the faster you're going to do it. And you can see that you get scored on that. And then uh, you'll gain uh, some, a variety of sort of like uh, currencies like the Energon and some consumables you can use in matches too. So we'll go ahead then and join for Q for PvP rather. I found that, let me go ahead and get back in this mode. I have found that uh, PvP matches for Decepticons right now in the open beta tend to be a little bit faster. You get into them a lot faster. Uh, you're waiting like four or five minutes on the Autobot side, uh, which is interesting to me because it seems like the Autobots are less available. There's not as many around when I was playing as the Autobot. Uh, so I found myself waiting a lot longer for less players actually joining. So I thought that was a little bit strange. I'll go ahead and ready up here and uh, join. So this is just a straight up eliminate the Autobots style mode. There are a couple of different uh, gameplay modes. One of them is sort of like capture and hold. You capture points and uh, accrue crew resources over time. And then uh, this is the only other mode I've currently seen. I don't know if there are more. Um, there are no modes that involve any sort of PvE like objectives of you killing minions or anything like that or you know enemy Decepticons or enemy uh, Autobots, you know, that are minions, not actual players showing up. So in that respect, it's not really like so much a, uh, a mob in that respect. Now, I can hit right click here to boost my form and come out of it, you know, freely. And I can change between these pretty much willy-nilly. Now, I can choose to right click here and that'll allow me to zoom in. Oh, this guy is trying to kill me here. Get out here and come out of my mode. I can choose to right click and that will actually zoom in on the enemy characters and kind of lock onto them. You have a chance to crit characters when you're locked on like this, so it's generally the, the sort of style you want to do, uh, but you do move at a reduced speed. So this guy here is just trying to do damage up there, I don't think he's really paying attention to me. Now I can use my special S tech ability, which is my middle ability right there, and that will slow him down considerably and net me a free kill. I don't think he was really paying attention there, and I'll just pick up that extra energon to use. Now, I have an ability on my E as well, which is sort of like a damage mitigator. I can hold that down. It's like an extra little shield for me. Uh, and that is positional, so I will have to aim that in front of me. I can fire my weapon as well just by moving here, and uh, it'll just sort of automatically target the nearest enemy and uh, do damage to them. Honestly, I, I would have liked... Ooh. Can I get him? Oh, he's dead. Alright, who killed him? Um, Megalarius killed him with a... A minigun. So who are we like? We got three on three right here. I've seen this up to like five on five. Looks like it's four now. One person is opting to get another character. Oh, we're gonna lose. No, he's still alive. He's still good. Let's go ahead and come up here. Now I don't really have any supportive abilities, so I'm not really in a position to help anybody if they need to be healed up. Uh, but I deal an insane amount of damage. I need to watch out though, because. One thing in this game is that kill times are very, very slow. So in order to, to kill an enemy, uh, you're going to be spending quite a while uh, dealing damage to them, a 1v1, unless they are someone who has, you know, just a lot of focus on damage here. Don't die. 
Don't die on me. All right, so I'm gonna use my special ability here. Do an upper punch and bam, kill that guy. So that was my S tech ability for my, my punches. Probably my most powerful single target ability here out of all my weapons. And as you notice, I can charge up my attack here and deal extra damage here to this guy. Ah, where are you going? Oh, he's died. Miguel Arias, again, taking them out. Now, you're not seeing this because we're winning pretty easily right now, but whenever you kill an enemy, you don't really immediately go back to a respawn screen. In fact, when you're a Decepticon or an Autobot dies, you actually have to pick a different Decepticon or Autobot to use in battle. If you don't, if you don't do this, uh, you'll have to choose to repair that Decepticon or Autobot. Um, and repairing costs money. Like, it actually costs relic points to do. Like, the actual cash shop currency you've got to use. I'm going to slow this guy down. He's not going to be able to get away, unfortunately. Go back in this mode here and just run away just a little bit. So what you'll end up seeing is that... Uh, the, the whole like picking a different character to use, it takes you into a, a completely separate screen. That initial screen where you saw me choose a, a character to use, like I got a little bit away and then oh, died. Uh, that's the screen that you're gonna actually use for selecting different Decepticons or Autobots. So right now we've already got them sort of pinned in here and you notice while it says it's four on four, none of the other characters are actually spawning and that's because uh, they either don't have enough left to use, and they're opting not to use their relics uh, to to repair them. Because uh, I think uh, if you don't use relics, it, it takes like a certain amount of time. Uh, or they're just simply waiting it out. You know, So we got two people back in here, but again, we're in a really, really strong position, essentially. Boom, get that guy. Uh, because of the fact that we're all up, you know, they only have two players coming back in the game. There's no real... Since there's no, like, timed, you know, coordination, like, not everybody doesn't spawn back in at the same time, even after you accuse your character, and you can't get back in, that guy is, like, just staying there. Hey, what's going on? Um, what you'll find is that, you know, there's, once you team wipe a, a team, you basically just screw yourself over, or the enemy team is basically screwed at that point. And what I mean by that is, slow that guy down so he can get away. There we go, get myself another kill. This character is very, fairly good. Um, so what I mean essentially is that once you team wipe them, you're gonna find that they have a really, really hard time coming back. Like you have to all spawn and move as a team. It's very team based. Like you, you can't really deal enough damage on your own to sort of, you know, be a lone wolf style character. Everybody has a lot of shields, they have a lot of abilities that allow them to take less damage. And because of the whole cat and mouse style of gameplay, uh, where you can immediately turn into uh, a car and, and then turn out of a car and sort of like duck and weave, uh, there's always a chance that someone can get away. It's quite easy unless you slow them down. So I think he is uh, just letting us kill him really quickly so that we can move over with this match. Or maybe he's just lagging out, I don't know. But there you have it. Out of, I'd say, the four or five games that I've played thus far, uh, I've only had maybe one or two um, end where both teams are, are fairly evenly matched. Uh, as you'll notice here, the other the other teammate, he's in there, you know, and really there's no coordination going on right now on, on the, the enemy's team side. You got one character coming out trying to get himself a free kill. He's not going to be able to do it. Uh, these guys here, they're fairly tanky. They don't really have to worry about it so much, and I think there's like an angry heal that we can do on his uh, middle S tech button that will heal up everybody. All right. So I have different abilities to use. Unfortunately, I'm not really having to use them right now. And I can't really, if I leave this game, I'm stuck in it, unfortunately. Uh, which basically means that I have to wait for this game to be over or, uh, you know, by either participating in it and just sort of gradually grinding these people out or if I'm on the receiving end of it, just gradually letting them kill me. Uh, because you actually can't stay inside that middle area. After about 10 seconds or so, it will kick you out of that. Let's see if I can slow this guy down. Oh, slowed. <laughs> slow him down, he just fell down there. Uh, so, yeah, unfortunately for that reason... i slow that again. Now there's two sort of tiers of S-Tech ability, essentially. I'm just going to keep hitting this guy with this uh, beam weapon. Boom! 
Where are you going? Uh, slow. Dang it. Can't slow quite. Oh, there we go. Easy enough. So there's two tiers of the S ability, or S tech ability. You get one tier after doing uh, about, you get it right about right here or so, and it'll do like a, a lesser version of the special ability for that weapon. And then if you get two, uh, you'll get like the most powerful version of that ability to use. So it's all about sort of like, do you need do you need the initial sort of ability or do you need the more, more powerful one? And generally speaking, with this character, I tend to use the uh, the slow the most because a lot of people try to just run away. And look, I mean, you can see here, when you have four characters, you know, focus firing, it's a lot quicker kill time, of course, uh, comparatively to just one character. And there is some body blocking you can do as well. I slowed him down. And it's this whole game of cat and mouse here. Boom. Hit that guy. So we only got two more to, to do here before uh, we can move on. So this is a slaughter here. And uh, so far in the open beta, this is generally how matches go. Unfortunately, I'm sorry that I, I don't have anything better to show out of this match because it's kind of just, I, you know, normally I wouldn't want to show this. I would want to show something a little bit more balanced, and especially if I die uh, and show you how that mechanic works. But what I found is that I generally don't die currently. If your team has the, uh, the upper hand, uh, you find yourself not dying very often because a lot of times... Uh, you're going to be running a, he uh, a healing teammate or someone who, who has a he healing ability or defensive ability. Uh, but uh, if you're on the receiving end of the punishment, you'll find that you're dying a lot. You're going to run out of Autobots or Decepticons quite quickly. Oh, by the way, you can jump on top of buildings, which is pretty nice. You're still inside those buildings. This is what I talk about, sort of like bland. These All these buildings look sort of like they're they're using stock assets from like the unity store just not not as detailed at all comparatively to the uh the uh, decepticons and autobots themselves but there's the the 20 out of 20 that's what we needed for the win so you'll be able to see all the different resources we we gain from that here decepticon victory so in that respect it's it's really grindy honestly it's it's right now there's just this really odd sense of like power, like powerball or, or snowballing rather, where one team will just take the lead early, and then because of the whole you having to respawn in a separate menu, no one ever comes in uh, at the same speed. It seems, and so unless you're sort of orchestrating or working with others and communicating, uh, you'll find that you know players will sort of trickle out after the initial wipe, and you have a really hard time coming back from that. All right, so I got a bunch of relics here, some experience, and Energon Collective for doing this. I got some uh, different, uh, of course, achievements as well. You, besides your individual level, uh, I believe there's also a level for your specific character or your specific uh, uh, Autobot or Decepticon you're using. So if you look here, and one thing I don't like is that immediately when you get back here, it automatically puts you back in the queue, automatically. There's no, like... Do you want to queue back up? No, it just puts you back into it. And if you're not paying attention or you step away from the keyboard through this long, overdrawn, you know, loading screen once more, uh, you're going to find yourself back in a match in AFK. So, you know, I'm waiting for the UI to come up here. And is it not doing it this time? Oh, there, now there it goes. See, auto queuing for match there. All right. So I don't want to join that yet. I'll go over here and uh, show off one of the other uh, Decepticons I have available to me. And I'll also go ahead and showcase uh, a little bit of the customization uh, through the tuning aspects. All right, so here we have our different characters. I'll go ahead and opt for Rampart this time with his giant axe. And then we go to tuning area and you have power cores, consumables, mining probes, and available stats. We'll go ahead and minimize that. This kind of looks like it's not quite formatted correctly to get all the text on the screen. Uh, power cores start unlocking at level five and these are only gained through gameplay and essentially it's sort of like a passive boost to your character. You can put an offensive, defensive, or utility up to two each on, uh, on this character. And by clicking on one of these, you'll notice here that each one of these will gain you something like critical hit damage by 10%, melee hits against a target with a classified debuff, also give an omni damage over time, which deals 3.6 damage per tick. Omni damage is the damage that does uh, that's done to both shield and spark which is your health at the same time. 
Uh, and then we have uh, base virus detonator, which uh, a target infected by a virus debuff deals 3.5 additional omni damage. So I don't know if any of his damage is omni is omni based or virus based or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead with a straight up critical hit damage. Now I can go for defensive if I want. If I click on defensive here, repairing any bot buff with a boost increases self repairs. Uh, there's no benefits for this select the bot. So this looks like if you're wanting to go like a medic route, you could do that. And then there's utility here, which damage taking damage fuels S tech gauge 1.3. So allows you to build that up if you wanted to use your special ability more. I just kind of like the critical hit damage here. I'm gonna go ahead and equip that. Now, I don't know how exactly you get more of these. Uh, you can replace each power core by putting in a different one in it. It'll just outright replace what you have. If you look at the actual founders packs uh, on the website, which there are several of them, you can actually get what's called base power cores, upgraded power cores, and optimized power cores, depending on which founder pack you get. You only get optimized power cores if you purchase the Cyber Knight pack, which is $450 for this game, which is incredible for a browser-based game. I've never seen something have such a large founders pack for, for a game like this, and a game that seemingly seems incomplete in some areas. Uh, so I don't really know how that will affect gameplay because I don't own one of those packs and I haven't seen any other option for, for sort of picking these up in the wild or crafting them. Consumables, uh, these are things that you can craft. Uh, go ahead and click this. And you also find them in the world themselves uh, by doing like the PVE stuff outside. I found several of these in that. And these things like reduce repairs by 50% for nearby enemies, uh, reduce all incoming damage, and then reduce incoming damage to spark by 40%. So you get like a couple of options there. And you can use these in combat. I think that once you use it, just like it you know, denotes, once you use a consumable, it's no longer available to you. Although I don't know if it's just available to you in that match or it's a one-time use. Now probes, probes are something that you can use in the open world PVE to harvest more energon. It's basically like you set it down in an area, uh, it will start mining for you and you have to protect it from a couple of waves of minions. And you can engineer and create more of these uh, in order to you know harvest more essentially so over here I can choose to freely put damage in other or, sorry stats rather in other uh, areas of my combat or of my my character here uh, I can increase my spark damage my omni damage my regeneration movement speed all this stuff uh, just by putting these points in here and you gain a point every time you level up and these are you can freely move these around so there's no like it's not like an MMO where once you put it in there you're stuck with it you can in fact, freely choose uh, to change these, but they're also based on the character. So I don't really have any sh direct shield damage. I only have Omni and Spark damage, so I'll just go ahead and opt for more of those. All right. If we go to engineering really quickly here, you'll be able to see how you can actually craft things. It does use a craft over time mechanic. It kind of seems like it just tries to force you to use these relics anywhere you can. So you can choose to wait for this probe. I, I made the, the most expensive mining probe here, the probe three, which costs about 705 uh, of the Energon. Uh, however, it's taken about an hour, uh, two hours rather, for this to, to craft. So I've already done it an hour here. And once I get this, I'll be able to yield uh, quite a lot of Energon out in the open world. And then I can also create augmentations, which allow me to augment how I my character uh, receives or, or does damage to itself. Um, so for example here, reducing incoming damage to spark by 6% for 48 hours. It's a pretty good passive bonus, honestly, especially when you consider that you have to spend 7,400 to do it, or you can just buy it instantly. So while I do say that, you know, of course all these things are accessible with in-game currency, this isn't very, you don't get this very quickly and you don't get relics very quickly either. So it really just sort of encourages you to spend money wherever possible. And from the looks of things, the fact that the Founders Packs start off at like, you know, a ridiculous, I think it's like $29 and move up to, to $49, uh, $450, you know, all of this really just screams pay to win. And not necessarily the gameplay perspective, but certainly like in the enjoyment area, you know, for you to enjoy the game and uh, on a long term and not just jump in and enjoy a match here or there, uh, you're going to be spending a lot of time grinding out matches, especially matches where you may run out of bots. Uh, or you're just going to end up paying for a lot of the relics, essentially. All right, so there's repair packs here. These things repair an offline bot in the hangar. So again, you can craft these, or you can just pay to craft one, or you can just pay 
relics to just instantly revive it. I mean, you have like two different ways you can pay with relics to revive these these bots, essentially. And it just uh, kind of seems redundant in that respect. There's also augments that you can get as well. I don't have any currently, but these will allow you to augment uh, your overall characters, not just each one individually. And then, of course, you have uh, each of your sort of medals and achievements that you get uh, for completing certain objectives. I do like the fact that it breaks down everything here, like your favorite warrior. I have 11 kills, 20 assists, no deaths with dry by 31 kill to death ratio. That's that's my best bot. <laughs> no deaths there, um, and so you can see all of that stuff itself. Every time you level up, you do gain access to like you know, like I said before, the the different passive bonuses that you can do through the tuning and what have you. Uh, let's go ahead and just deploy this guy. Uh, but overall, uh, leveling up, you kind of get about a level every two or three wins, I'd, I'd wager to say. We'll go ahead and go back out into the central city while we, we wait for another match here. Can't change form here, unfortunately. But what do we got down here? Are these quests? Notifications. Oh, it's just a simple notification. I don't know why it looks like quests. Communications here, nothing right there. I would really prefer there to be like at least at the very least daily quests, some sort of thing to have an objective to complete outside of just PvP and PvP. Um, you know, you go out and you do the mining and what have you to get the resources so you can make new consumables and what have you, but I don't know, it just kind of feels like it's not a big enough reward essentially. You don't get enough from doing the PvE uh, to really make it feel, I don't know, enjoyable or, or worthwhile. And I haven't seen any sort of really large open world bosses or anything like that just sort of make the experience something different and enjoyable, separate from uh, the, the PvP here. So you see my character moves considerably slower. Now I have heard that uh, certain characters, depending on which ones you use, their uh, vehicular mode uh, functions like better in certain terrain scenarios. So for example, the SUV, this here, this off-road's better at going off-road, whereas uh, something that is more of like a roadster would be better uh, on the roads and goes faster there. I have yet to actually confirm that, so I can't really say for sure. Looks like there is a uh, enemies have infiltrated the area, limited the troops, but generally speaking, you're going to just be killing uh, lots of these uh, troopers, and, and I think they're called like uh, terracons uh, in the game, and that will provide you some extra outs, you know, extra currency outside of uh, the PvP. And then once you get the Energon collected here, you can just come over to these uh, deposit points and deposit that for your personal inventory. You have to do that, otherwise any sort of Energon that you gain in this area is completely lost. Uh, but I will note, I should... Oh, equipment disabled, what is going on here? I'm getting owned by these auto troopers here. This auto trooper in the back is dealing all kinds of damage to me. Alright, so I'll use my little bonus there. It's on a 80 second cooldown it looks like. I'm getting owned by these guys. All right, let's see. I'll use my special ability here. And then I can, of course, also whirlwind around. Where the, this guy is just trying to run away from me. Come here. Uh, use my special ability. All right, so there's some energy on there. Got a little bit of relic points as well. Come back over here and see if I can finish this guy off. There is quite a lot of... Um, interactions between abilities so for example a lot of the bonuses and benefits you'll get from a, a particular sort of active ability will go and call, uh, sort of relate or, or work well with other abilities you possess as well as your allies possess so there is some sort of stacking and combination from that uh, which is nice to see however I just feel like any sort of customization and depth added to the game is just marred by the fact of all the the gating of how you actually have to purchase a lot of the, the content. Um, I have no problem with people having to, to buy uh, characters, but the fact is that you have to have the actual cash up currency to do so, and the cash up currency is already something that's very scarce that you get uh, in the actual world itself. It makes it feel as though there's no realistic way for you to get any other style of Autobot or Decepticon from just free-to-play playing like at all it does not seem like that's the case it seems like it would take a ridiculous amount of time to do that and uh, that's something that I really don't like in the game it it just kind of feels like there's the you know 
Jagex had we well, got a flamethrower. I've never seen a character with a flamethrower before. It just seems like Jagex is like they they knew that the game was in development for for too long. They wanted to get it out to people, uh, but the game was just not ready. Even as a, a moda, it just seems like you know it's kind of like ah oh, we'll keep the PVP in there and we'll keep some of the open world areas here. Uh, for players to mess around with, you know, and I'm it kind of seems like this should have had a lot more like a lot more quest style things and things for you to do And I don't know it just it doesn't seem complete honestly I mean there's there's definitely some things enjoyable about the game I like the cat and mouse aspect of it. I like you know scooting around and you know having to reposition constantly like there's some really good ideas in the game especially for a browser game, uh, but I just don't like how you progress now comparatively to other browser games yeah, it's not that bad you know there's 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 worse browser games for sure uh, but if you look at it as a standalone game as a game that's free to play you know that you would play over a long course of time um, I just don't see myself recommending it in its current open beta state hopefully things can improve over time and uh, more things can become available more options for you to do things and they really work on the whole lever issue because a lot of characters a lot of people just leave after their bot has died uh, because they don't really see a purpose in staying in the match you know you don't have any active bots and you know and the enemy teams is kind of farming you at that point it just doesn't really seem that enjoyable to be, to be quite honest here go ahead and queue up for pvp and just so hopefully i can maybe get a different map or match type to show off you a little bit before we we conclude the first look here but yeah i mean there's there's definitely some things that they have the right idea. There, there's good ideas here, and um, I can definitely tell that the game was attempting to be fairly ambitious when it was a MMO. Uh, but in its current sort of mode of state here, it, it just—they need to work, especially on the whole character selection. If you could select your characters during the match, like inside the match, and not have to go through the whole loading process of loading back up the hangar, picking your character, and loading back in the game. It was much more just like a overview. You kind of just saw what characters you had available uh, on the the screen itself while you're still in the match. It would, I think it would make transitions between uh, that screen and getting back in the game, having people sort of get back in the match and matches not be one-sided much better. I think that transitions and sort of uh, the the evenness of a match uh, would be a lot a lot smoother essentially. All right, so we'll go ahead and deposit my what little energy I have up here. And then I can come over here to the hangar uplink, and you notice load. All right, so if that if this if I had died, I would have loaded in here. I could choose my character, hit deploy, take a couple seconds. Again, this is what you would experience, and then you're back in the match. So you know that's that's like four or five seconds right there. It's not terrible, but if you have, I mean, I have a SSD drive, you know, a solid state drive, and I have no idea what this would take on something like a browser. Whoa, I'm deploying into a match. Okay. So it definitely seems like uh, it would take quite a while and, and get annoying over time. You know, there's a whole chance of players just once they get out of that screen, just never coming back. You know, you don't feel invested in the match. There's that disjoint essentially. Ah, so here's Meteor Storm. Uh, I'll go ahead and just show a little bit of it. We're kind of running a little bit out of time here, but you can choose uh, which character you start with here. And I chose that. Yeah, so make sure I had Hotline there. You can choose it before the match begins, and then after each time you die. But in this in this mode, you basically uh, go out and you select and you own these points on the map here. Uh, whenever meteorites also come down, there they'll fall to the earth and sort of reset a point. So you'll have to go in and uh, select that point as well and like recapture it essentially. So this is one of the more open maps, uh, not you know focused on just killing the enemy player, but holding on to points as well. But you notice here, it's it's two to one right now. It will be two to one until other players on the Autobot side joins. Uh, and if that never happens, there will never be a bot that loads in or anything like that. It'll simply be three v one the entire time, which will suck for this guy. You know, it really sucks for if you're on the team which doesn't have enough players or people aren't loading back in because they just quit, etc. Doesn't make for an enjoyable experience. But it looks like we're not really going to get a chance to show it off so much. Not enough players on the enemy team. But I'm going to go ahead and end my first look there. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of what to expect currently from the open beta and Transformers universe. I would definitely say give it a try if you're a fan of Transformers. Uh, like I said, the characters themselves and their animations are quite good, I'd say. 
Uh, it just seems like they really need to flesh out the open world more. Uh, they need to work on people leaving uh, the matches and the whole choosing a new bot. They need to tone down the using cash shop currency for everything. That's way ridiculous and certainly uh, something that's a huge off-put of the game. So I would definitely recommend uh, not spending any currency on it right now. Hopefully the developers take the feedback from the open beta, make some changes to that because uh, it's just... For the amount of money you have to spend to even get like one character, it just seems ridiculous. It does not seem uh, very enjoyable at all. All right, guys. Until next time, though, I'll go ahead and leave you with this loading screen. But until then, we'll see you later. Smokeify out. Later, guys.